this worthless, no good ex of mine kicked in my back door and he stole my cell phone. Thirsty. No, thirsty. you're thirsty. She has a history of making false police reports. What is that that you got there? Nothing at all. Let me take a look at nothing at all. My life has been kind of jumbled around since yes. this young woman hit me. The plaintiff was driving erratically. Oh. I was trying to keep a safe distance. This was a scam. I am being taken advantage of. Plaintiff Marina Dickerson claims her ex kicked in her door and stole her phone. She's suing for $2,670 for property damage and a new phone. Defendant Darrell Mitchell claims his ex is an angry, money-hungry psycho who stole his assistant's check. Yes. Case 59 on the docket, Dickerson versus Mitchell. We have the plaintiff, Ms. Dickerson. Yes. <clears throat> and you are suing the defendant, Mr. Mitchell, in the amount of $2,670 for door repairs and cell phone replacement. Correct. I'm suing today because this worthless, no good ex of mine, this worthless, no good ex of mine kicked in my back door and he stole my uh, cell phone. You say something better than that. Uh, <laughs> You're saying he kicked in your back he door? He kicked in my back door and, and he stole, stole your cell phone. The iPhone, yes, he yeah, did. How'd this happen? I met him uh, mid 2000. Yep. Um, we became really good friends. Uh, back in 2017, we had started dating. He had asked me out. And, you know, things pretty much went left right in the beginning. He moved in. We moved pretty quickly. You have a relationship. You guys are living together. And then one day he decides it's, to leave. Yeah, we just kind of stopped talking. It wasn't like we broke up or anything. So um, he was coming to retrieve his, his items that he yeah. left. He wanted. Um, I was not home to get them. Yeah. So I got home later on that night and realized that the rail had kicked in my door. Did you see him kick in the door? I did not see him kick in the door, but he admitted that he kicked the door no. in okay, when he came to first. my house. Did you admit you kicked Never in the door? Admitted. Yes, he no. did. Yes, he did. No, I did not. Yes, he okay, did. Well, let me hear from him. I did not. So he what did happened? admit it to okay. kicking in the door. Uh, what happened was, basically, as she explained, uh, I was calling to retrieve some things, and um, she was not at home. Uh, when she did get home, she called me cussing, talking about I kicked no, in her no, door. No, he was okay, already... Do had. we have pictures of this door? Yes, we do. I have... Yes, I do. Okay. I have pictures. This is what the maintenance did because they're refusing to fix the door until the payment is made. <sighs> so that's what they did as far as to secure me and my daughter in there so I can lock the door, sleep, yeah. and do whatever it is to make us safe. This is the condition of the door right now today. Okay, it is clear from that picture that a whole someone frame kicked in the door. That, yes. Yeah. What isn't clear yet is you're saying he did it, he's saying he didn't do it, and unless someone but gives he me did. proof. She has a history of making false police reports. Uh, she, she is doing things like this to other men. Uh, this is not a false no, What is that that you got there? Nothing at all. Let me take a look at nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> nothing at all. This isn't her first time making a report like this. You're saying he kicked the door in. You're saying you didn't kick the door in. Did you get your stuff back that night? No. Yes, after. Okay, no, so... he didn't. Okay, so here's my question. If he kicked the door in to get his stuff, why didn't he have his stuff? The part that doesn't make sense is if he's so angry at you and wants his stuff back, and he breaks down the door so he can get in, once you break down the door, why would he then walk away? Why wouldn't he have continued in the house, take the stuff that was his, and leave? Because he didn't want to be in trouble. He didn't want to get in trouble. He, he agreed that he would well, pay for the door. Well, he broke down the door. He would be in trouble for breaking down exactly. the door. Exactly. If he exactly. was staying with you, mm -hmm. taking his, his own stuff out of the house, would be reasonable and he wouldn't be in trouble with that. The trouble is the, quote, breaking and entering. If he broke the door, which already would have been, quote, the crime, he might as well have taken the stuff that was legitimately his and you're both agreeing. What about this cell phone business? I did take you the took cell her phone. phone. She, um, we, we, I was getting some assistance. Phone. I was getting assistance uh, from my kids. I had uh, a check put in her name. The state would not even allow them to issue a she check for my check name in it if he did not say that he didn't live with me. He yeah. said that he, he was living, living together, and that's why the state her. issued know, out a right check. Now I'm talking to him. He I'm went to the you. county man, and told him that. I took the cell phone because she she uh, she took a check 
that belonged to me. I, when I tried to get the check back from her, she refused to give the okay, check. Okay, so I'm going to get to the check in a moment. Okay, you want to But I got to tell you right now, <laughs> if you took the cell phone from her, I don't care what kind of reason you had. Mm -hmm. She owed me money. She right. what, Whatever it is, you can't steal another person. I wasn't stealing it. Phone. I, you I told it. her, I, you, told her you, I would give it back to her if she would give me back my money. Well, you can't even do that? <laughs> now, the check, as I understand it, based on your written statements, mm -hmm. which you both signed, there was a check for home assistance that was coming every month because you were staying there. Not because I was staying there. Why would they would have never issued a check. Just Why? Just I can't get an answer if you're talking. Basically, we were going to move there. We weren't staying there. We were going to move there. She was getting the check in her name, and you're saying that... For us staying with her, which we were not. <laughs> Why was the state agency sending she you money? She put us out. She put us out, like, right when she got the check. She right. got the money, and she put us out. <laughs> I understand the check was in your name, and it was for $350. Yes. 360 340 actually. Wow, $10. Oh, $20 more. $10. <laughs> you really okay. needed it that bad, Obviously, huh? you do, too, you though. Need it. Okay. You need it, too, though. You're here today. You was do. Was that amount too. of money, was but that amount of money, whether it was 340 350 or 360 Hello. was that amount of money for the coming month that you would be staying there? Exactly. Yes. Okay. I have the, both the evidence of the check. The $260 check was a prorated amount for October's rent. That's the check that he's talking about that's in question. Yes, I did cash it because he lived in my house. This check for November from the county was issued to me. By that time, the defendant did leave my house, and he went down to the county and had them reverse this funds out of my account. So therefore, this money here, it was already given back to him on his grant, and he know that this the question, the check that he has in question that was still due to me because he lived in my house okay, with his check. Okay, I'm not talking about that month. I'm only talking about the three. November, he received that back. They, he he went to the county and told you're him. You're under oath, and there are consequences. Yes. Now. Oh, for sure. Did why, you why? receive the money back? I didn't receive it back. It was issued to me like it should have been. The so check. you certainly shouldn't have gotten that. Right, Money. I shouldn't have gotten a check. So October the... either. We weren't staying in there yeah. October. She should have never Make had any your mind. Was you staying there or was you not? You she just said not... that you, you, that's what the check was issued for. Input. That's what right. it was for. October, your kids were staying there. We you weren't were staying, staying there. I so wasn't he staying wasn't there. there in October. Where's the proof that he was staying there in October? Judge, he was there in October. That's why the check is prorated for $260. The original amount that he paid for rent that I wrote the letter to the county saying this is what he wanted to pay for rent because he didn't have a job at the time. This is what's his con uh, uh, contributions to paying, paying rent from me providing a place for him and his child. Like, You're saying don't... that he lived there in October? He lived there for almost a year she and a half. Yes, he not... had. I'm talking uh, just that month. Yes, that month, yes. That month. Yes, yes, yes. That he was living, living there. Living there. October, yes, he was. With his children. Yes. And you're saying you were not living there in October at all, a few days there. Where were you living? I was spending the night. My mom stays down the street. That's where I reside. But you didn't formally... At that point, notify anyone that you're no longer living at I that did, apartment. I did, I did Where the is the evidence that you formally notified the agency that you were no longer living there in October and therefore the check should not be sent there in October? I don't have the evidence, I ain't gonna lie, but you know... Well, uh, that's, that's the problem they, I'm dealing with. They did with. not give her November. I'm only allowed to deal with the evidence that is before me. For example, I can't give her the money for the door because I don't have proof that you did it. I can't give you the money for October because I don't have proof that you formally moved out. You and so based it. only on what I have proof on, which is the taking of the phone, I don't have proof that you've notified them at the beginning of October that that is no longer your official residence. You and if I don't have that, that proof, that I'm residence. ruling for the plaintiff in the sum of $670. Sir, thirsty. No, you're thirsty. thirsty. For $260. Thirsty. We're gonna fight over $260. You! 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 I, no, you, you, you! You here. So what? You are. So that's, what? That's because it was old to me. You knew you was living there, so you can't get up Who are you? Who are you? Ain't shit old to you. Ain't shit old to you. Ain't shit old to you. Ain't shit old to you.
Duh. Nothing. Get a life. I ain't no Chicago well, people calling the police or, ladies, or trying to come to court to, to avoid this face, no, okay? No, he ain't paying no bills. Money, he ain't paying no bills. He's a leech. He ain't paying no bills. Plaintiffs Mary Jo Dupree and Katie Dupree claim the defendant caused an auto accident. They're suing for $3,125 for property damage and lost wages. Defendant Catlin Hightower claims the plaintiffs are scam artists who are out to get a new car. I do. Yes. Thank you. This is case number 211 on the docket, Dupree versus Hightower. We have the plaintiffs, Mary Jo Dupree and Katie Dupree. Yes, sir. Okay, and you are... She is my mother-in-law. And you are suing the defendant, Ms. Hightower. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, for $3,125 for property damages and lost wages due to a car accident. My life has been kind of jumbled around since this accident, since yes. this young woman hit me. Uh, I had resigned from my job, which I have my resignation letter right here for you. I'll take a look at this in a second. Tell me your story. So, I have a visual if you'd like to see that. Yes, let's okay. do this. Okay, so this is Payne Avenue. Yes. And there is an alleyway to my house that I take. Okay. I was coming down here with yes. my blinker on. I had stopped for probably a good 30 seconds or more. Okay. With my right blinker on. Okay. There was a there car pulling out of the alley trying to turn left. Oh, there it comes, there it comes. Yep. Be careful. So I stopped. Oh, and it <laughs> yep. on. oh. Yes. When this all happened, she hit me so hard I went through the like where I would have turned. Yes. The woman that was pulling stopped out. right there that was pulling out. I also have a witness statement from her that witnessed the whole thing. Your story is that you waited till she was through the alley and then you could make your right turn. Yes, sir. While you were stopped there, you got hit from behind by the defendant. Yes, sir. Your side of the story. Well, Your Honor, I feel like I am being taken advantage of. I am astonished by the story that she's telling you. Okay. Um, because those are not the facts. That is not what happened. Okay. Uh, um, you want to show us Yes. Okay. I have a... And then I'll hear your whole story. Well, I was coming down Magnolia. I live about a block up, turning on to Payne. That's my car. Okay. You make a left. You see her. You're following her. Oop. So you still hit her from behind. Yes. So I'm not disputing that. The plaintiff was driving erratically. Oh. She was speeding through the intersection. And when she came to the alley that she was turning onto, she stopped very abruptly. I also agree that she did have her blinker on, but um, it was such an abrupt stop. I was trying to keep a safe distance. I had my two-year-old in the back of the car, and um, when I saw that she had halted to a stop, I started honking, I put my foot on the brake, and I was able to stop enough to only tap her car, but um, yeah, the damage okay. that has occurred was not all from my vehicle. So I got out of the car, obviously I was very upset. I had sure. my five-year-old daughter in the back seat. She was yeah. scared, of course. I got out of the car and immediately asked the defendant what she was doing. Um, everyone at the bus stop, because there was a bus stop right there, was yelling at her, why were you on your phone? She was stopped, she had her blinker on. I mean, I was upset and all I was worried about was my daughter and the sure. fact that my car was now completely smashed in, in the back. Yeah. I asked her for her insurance and she said that she was on her grandmother's policy and she didn't really have the information. At the end of it, she didn't have any insurance information to give me. I assume she called the cops, but the cops never showed up. I don't actually own a cell phone, so I didn't... I mean, I didn't call the cops. I trusted that she did it. So the police didn't come? There's no police no, report? No, there was at. a police report. So I walked down home and called the cops myself. They said, yes, there's a case report and all of this. Call this number. So I called Officer Ryan, was his name. And, uh, do you have the report with you? Um, I do not, actually. Uh, short story, our luggage got lost. You that, mean flying here for the case? Flying here for the case. Our luggage is not here. So that's your story of what y happened? Yeah, so I went there. I called the cops. They said, try and get a hold of her for the information. So you're saying she hit you from behind mm -hmm. and, and caused damage to the car. Well, let's see the pictures of what happened to the car. Okay, that is your car. Yes. Well, she the dent in the broken glass, um, in that picture, our taillights are actually taped. I had to tape them back in. Good. The paint is, it no, was okay, what so it that, was. Right. But we can no longer have any weight in our back seat. It got pushed into yeah. the forward to where if there's weight in the back seat, it grinds 
the tires and the suspension and all of that. And being the fact that I have three children that I have to take to and from school, it's difficult not to be able to put them in the car. So you're saying the car was not drivable? I was not able to pick my mother up for babysitting or drop the kids off at school or go to work. That's why I had to resign my job. All right, do we have a picture of your vehicle? Yes. Okay. No one's disputing that you hit her car and there was some damage. Yes. The plaintiff had mentioned when we were exchanging information that she's put $750 into the vehicle already. She's had many issues with it, including the suspension. Yes, that I just got replaced. So um, I feel that really we're here because she wants a new car. It's not about repairing any damages or making up wages, it was possible for her, if she wasn't able to drive her car, to take a bus. Um, her having to quit her job is not on me. Okay. Yes. Well, I, and I'm Are you here, here because you own the car? I am here because I own the car Got and it. I carry insurance on the car. And there's uh, a liability or liability collision? because that's Any what collision? you have on an old car, not collision, okay. or we wouldn't be here. And if uh, the defendant had insurance on her vehicle, we wouldn't be here because the insurance companies would have taken care of this. My insurance company was good enough to help me to find out that we did not find any active coverage for the other driver, your next step would be small claims court. I am insured. At the time of the accident, this is my proof of insurance. Oh, okay. Um, well, why driver, didn't your insurance company communicate okay. with mine? We and wouldn't be that here. Hit me? When, we wouldn't be here. When I spoke, when my fiance spoke to you on the phone, he explained that he would like your insurance company to contact me and we would give them my policy number. There was no contact made. So she was, yeah, she did have insurance. Why didn't you do something then? It was, okay. to I told you to go through the insurance company. And I did. We did. I want to know the uh, blue book value of the car. Would you like this, Your Honor? Average retail, $2,225. Fair value, Your Honor, for a 97 Oldsmobile is $1,050. That's low retail. Well, the damage made it pretty low retail. <laughs> After you hit me. Okay, all That's right. That's in fair condition. Okay, fair condition, 1,050. Yes, sir. Got it. You clearly caused the accident, period. She hit your car. That's what she ought to pay for. The amount I'm giving you on a 1998 car is in between the low to the average. It's 22 years old or mm -hmm. 20, you know. Yeah. I find for the plaintiff in the sum of $1,500. To remain at the stand. You're a grown-up. Take responsibility. I mean, it was an accident. I'm a grown-up. We both have kids. I mean, if you're old enough to have a kid and drive a car, you're old enough to take responsibility for it. That's all I ask. And none of this would have happened if she would have just apologized or showed any remorse whatsoever. Well, and had insurance. Insurance. As is the law. Insurance. I feel that it was quite clear that this was a scam, that the plaintiffs were trying to get a new car out of the whole ordeal, and they were taking advantage of me. It's comical, um, really. Thanks for watching. Now please approach the bench. The way I look at it, you have two options here. Option A, watch more Judge Jerry. Option B, watch more Jerry Springer. The choice is yours. Now get out of my courtroom. You have more clips to watch. And don't forget to subscribe.